Well, hello, folks. I just want to uh, touch on a couple of things today and just remember Jesus warned about how Christians, how believers in Jesus will be hated by all nations for his name's sake. The persecution that comes and also that people, it says in the New Testament that people who do this, Jesus said that people who do this, they will think they are doing God's service. Now, how can we see that in the world today? How can we see the increasing hostility and attack on Christianity? How can we see the philosophies in this world as well as the Marxism in the West, the atheism, Richard Dawkins and everyone, they say, well, the God of the Old Testament is a tyrant, projecting this idea in, in Gnosticism, which, which is so prevalent in the likes of Hollywood and the film industry and across the world, these, this Gnosticism, which was the first enemy of the gospel in the New Testament, where they, they believed that the God of this creation, of this created order of this world, this material world, is the demiurge. And the Enlightenment comes from Sophia and the Luciferians who believe that Lucifer came down into the Garden of Eden and offered a liberation to mankind to set them free from this so-called oppressive tyrant, demiurge God that was holding us prison in this world and that Lucifer came and liberated us, was like a saviour figure and gave us the opportunity to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to escape this prison. And, and this idea is, you see it all through different Hollywood films that are made by Gnostics, not every single film, but the, the prevalent ones made by people who are putting that Gnostic agenda in there. So you have this idea of the world being liberated, the same in, with David Icke who teaches theosophy, Alice Bailey, Helena Blavatsky stuff, theosophy. People like David Icke teach the same thing. This idea that is gradually moving the world towards blaming the Jews and the Christians and values in the West, wanting an end to that system, to that ideology, the uh, Christian foundation, to destroy them, to come after them, to attack them through Marxism, through atheism, through Gnosticism, through extremist radical forms of Islam, through Hinduism in India. All, all these different philosophies ultimately have their extreme elements that are going towards that. And I just want to say, to preface, by the way, when I talk about extremism, I'm not saying that every single person of all any of those religions are extremists, because <clears throat> they're not. This is more about the extremism side. But the, the extremism tends to become more and more vocal and shout louder. And we can see this sentiment, even with these protests across the world, and even with some forms of the truth movement, I see it in some of the truth movement groups on Telegram and places. Horrendously anti-Semitic, but they're also becoming anti-true biblical Christianity in the truth movement. Why? Because they say, well, that's Judeo-Christianity. It's all linked together and that is the problem. It's holding us back for our new age because these people want a new age. It's witchcraft, it's Gnosticism, it's new age. There's a big chunk of the truth movement that is Gnosticism. They, they don't believe in a saviour in Jesus from sin, which is our transgressions and evil to be, that he took our punishment on the cross for our sin. They believe in some kind of saviour uh, that will save us from this trap, that will save us from this current world system, that will save us from the oppression of this world and liberate us into a new age. So you end up with a false saviour and a lot of these people are going to be deceived a lot of these truthers are going to be deceived because they're going to believe the lie because they suppress the truth in unrighteousness, as the Bible says, like trying to push down the truth because they don't want to believe in the gospel. They don't want to believe in the truth of the Bible. But their, their idea is they want to be released or revolu a, a revolution from this current system. And that is part of the trick that's been played on them through the truth movement, especially with people like David Icke, 
the more I look at what David Icke has done, I'm not saying he's the only one, but the more I see of what David Icke and people like him taught from the very beginning of the early days of the truth movement, the New Age stuff, which he admitted himself he was dictated this information to by a female voice, audible female voice, which I would say is demonic and has led to doctrines of demons. He's injected this thought in there and he's basically painted this whole picture that the new world order that we need to destroy, he's basically used pinups of leaders and people that were part of the old world order. That's something that I personally feel has happened. And yes, there's bits of truth in it, but do you see what I mean? That the whole call is for the destruction of the West. You see a heavy focus on that, that we need to revolution from this current system or this old system and to go into the new order of the ages. And that is what is promoting, that is what has been promoted with pieces of truth here and there, but the ultimate thing is, is the destruction of this system. And my friends... I know this system in the West is not perfect, uh, but it's much better than the system in the East, the Eastern dictatorships. There's still some semblance of freedoms here in the West, although they're going slowly because it's been destroyed. But that original Christian framework where we had the right to life and liberty and ha pursuit of happiness and free speech and, and values and, and equal rights and all these types of things this system they're trying to bring down. But people don't realise in, in this area of the truth movement, if you bring down this system, it's going to be hell. It's going to be like in the, the Three World Wars letter that Albert Pike was supposed to have written, which he didn't seem to have written. Someone else wrote it. But there's still some interesting things in there. And that talks about the clash between the Zionist world and the Islamic world, which you can see that society going back to the origin of savagery. Do people in the truth movement realise if this system collapses in the West, which we know is part of the agenda, clearly, it's not going to be good. It's going to be awful. But we see all these things happening, all the potentially prophetic things of the last days that we see and, and the, the new world beast confederation rising, the political alignments coming together where we talk about Ezekiel 38 and that potentially coming in the future. Um, we see the alignments, we see Russia in their true colours joining hands with other groups and, and nations that are part of these confederations that people, that Christians for so long have said, well, this is what will happen in the last days. This is the confederation that will come against Israel. Um, this is what will happen. And, and many of these things have been correct by the looks of it. And it looks like it is coming together very quickly. You know, people have to realise that this whole collapse of the West thing is part of the agenda. This whole hatred of Israel thing is part of the agenda. That's what David Icke has been seeding since the very beginning, the theosophist. And if you notice that on Telegram, I don't know how many people use that, but or maybe Facebook and other places, YouTube you see that there's a lot of truthers or people who say they're truthers who are basically in support of Putin or Russia. And you see that very, very concerning, very strange. And it's, it's baffled me for a long time. But it's like the, the way I put it is the evil of wokeism, which is bad, as we know. The evil of that has driven some truthers to become polarised into thinking that, well, anything opposite to that, anything opposite to the West is good. So then they go down the route of supporting nations and dictatorships, Eastern dictatorships like Russia. They, they buy up the propaganda from Russia Today news channel, which has also been another one that was there since the beginning of the truth movement, seeding the anti-West rhetoric, promoting the Eastern dictatorships, never criticising the Russian Federation or Putin. And it's the same with the situation in Israel now. You've got people in the truth movement that have become increasingly anti-Semitic, anti-Israel stuff. 
and uh, so basically not willing to criticise terrorism because it, it doesn't fit their narrative. So anything to do with the West is evil and anything to do with the East, which is not the West, is somehow good or better. Yeah, I think uh, it's a very interesting time. And as we see these things happen, this is what I want to finish on. Because as I said, the New Age, the Gnosticism, they see Christians and Jews, they see us as the enemy. They see us as the devil, as, as the dragon. Yeah, like you've got here, this is a quote from Alistair Crowley. He said, nature's way is to weed out the weak. This is the most merciful way too. At present, all the strong are being damaged and their progress hindered by the dead weight of the weak limbs and the missing limbs, the diseased limbs and the atrophied limbs, the Christians to the lions. That's Alistair Crowley. The Christians to the lions. So it's, it's, it's this soft totalitarianism. It's a... It's a it's a tyranny that appears good and uh, yet wants to love you to death if you don't agree with it. It's a, a false love, it's a false unity like the Babylon Tower of Babel. It's a coming together, it's a confederation of the beast. These truthers that are on the side of Russia now, uh, you really need to wake up. You really need to wake up because you are going to be on the side of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38 alliance confederation that comes against Israel because you're already aligning and putting your chess pieces there. So please, let's use the Bible to understand these times. And it, as in the book of Revelation chapter 12, that shows it exactly there. First the Saturday people, then the Sunday people. The woman in Revelation 12 is a picture of Israel. The woman is a picture of Israel. Roman Catholicism say that that, that woman in Revelation 12 is Mary, is the Virgin Mary. Obviously because that's their false version of Mary, the goddess figure. But they say that's Mary. So they replace Israel with their goddess false goddess. So you see there that Rome replaces Israel with their goddess. And then the reformers, and the reformers did many good things, but the reformers came along and still carried, in my opinion, a few things from Rome, unfortunately. They came along and said, well, that woman is the church, which it can't be. If you look at the typology and the symbolism of the woman, that woman in the Old Testament, and you, uh, you look at the, in context, you can see that the woman is Israel because the Messiah, the male child in Revelation 12, comes from that woman. So Jesus didn't come from the church. They took that whole idea and replaced Israel with the church or with the Virgin Mary. And therefore, you can see that replacement theology comes from Rome. It's Romish, okay? So... That woman is, is, is Israel in, in the uh, Revelation 12. Then the male child comes from her, which is Jesus Christ. And then you, you read further on uh, how the dragon, which is Satan, basically he goes after the woman, Israel, the male child, Jesus Christ, and uh, the church, those who believe in Jesus Christ. And it says who keep the testimony of Jesus. So it's talking about Christians. So this is the thing, the dragon, Satan, is after Israel, comes after Jesus Christ, like Herod tried to kill all the young children to the seed and line of the Messiah. Um, you've got Pharaoh, you've got Hitler, you've got all these antichrist figures um, who have gone after Israel, all these pictures and types of the antichrist and this antichrist spirit and satanic agenda. So we can see the dragon, Satan, goes after the Israel and goes after the church, Christians, goes after Jesus Christ. All these philosophies, whether you call it truth or not, I mean, truth, trutherism has so many branches now. Please do not believe people just because they are on a truther chat or truther page or truther YouTube. 
There are so many different unbiblical areas of the truth movement. There's liberal truthers, there's communist truthers, far-right truthers, there's far-left truthers. And all we need to, to be in is, is the remnant of uh, people that are seeking the truth, but from a biblical perspective. We can just look at the Bible and we know what the prophecy is and we know where we need to stand and what we need to be vi vigilant about. The agendas in the truth movement, you have to understand that a majority of the truth movement is compromised. Don't believe groups and people who claim to be truthers just because they don't agree with the Western system or the Western wokeism, that somehow they have the answers because they've bought into the propaganda of the Eastern dictatorships. The fact is there are nuances all across the world. There are different shades of tyranny, different shades of totalitarianism. We're seeing a lot of it coming to the front today. And yes, it's there in the West too. But it's not as bad in the West at the moment. And anyone who disagrees with that, please go and live in China and tell me what you think then. Or please go and, and live in Russia and go out on the street and vocally protest the government and see where that leads you. Because I'm telling you now, the fact that you can criticise the government in the West, the fact that you are allowed to talk to people about the gospel without going to prison, that shows a lot. That this system you are, if you're in the West, this system that you are um, blessed to currently live under still, before it goes awry, you know, we're very blessed to do so. And I think sometimes we forget to be thankful for that. If you are on the side of the dragon in Revelation 12, if you take an honest look at yourself and you're against Christians, you're against Jews, you're against Israel, you're against Jesus, all these things, that's of the dragon that's of the agenda. If, you, if you're calling for the destruction of Israel, if you're calling for the dismantling and wiping out of Israel, then you've bought into the dragon, the dragon's lie. And all those people that do stand, if those people that do stand for Christ in the coming times, as the Bible says, there will be persecution. And you can see it now. What happens in Israel, that Christians are connected to the land of Israel. Yes, Jews need the Lord, absolutely. Jews cannot be saved without turning to Jesus as their Messiah, absolutely. But if you have to understand that what comes to that is going to come upon us, first the Saturday, then the Sunday. You have to understand that. The Revelation 12 says that. People are looking in the stars for this uh, Revelation 12 sign. But you have to understand that what Revelation 12 says prophesies and talks about is the persecution that is coming upon Israel, upon the church. It's already getting to the point now in society that if you stand boldly for Israel's right to exist, you're, you're becoming demonized. And you have to understand that that same spirit, that same satanic antichrist spirit, culminating in the antichrist himself and what he does and the way he persecutes uh, Israel and, and the Christians, etc., you have to understand that that spirit is active in the world. It's the zeitgeist. It's the spirit of the age. It's, it's what's coming. You know, it's what's coming against the church too eventually. It's what the Bible says. So be careful. Please stay biblical. Read the Bible. Don't go to these fringe sites that claim to be truthers, that have no idea what the Bible says. The Bible is the truth. We need to stick by the Bible we will be seen as the dragon, we'll be seen as the demiurge, we'll be seen as the ones holding it back. Judeo-Christianity is the enemy of the Gnostic New Age. And uh, there's either two choices when you, when you see these things happening in the world. You have two choices. You either go with the agenda which will lead to the New Age or you go with the gospel. There's only two choices. There's no fence sitting the world will be shaken and people will come out on one of either of those two sides. There's only two paths, the narrow path and the wide path. If you want to know Jesus, if you want to be saved, there's nothing we can do to earn it. Turn to him, confess your sins, 
Repent of what you've done and say, Lord, I'm sorry for those sins. Confess them to him. Lay them down at his feet and ask him through his grace and free gift and faith in what he's done on the cross in payment for our sins and resurrection from the dead on the third day. Ask him to save you through the shedding of his blood for your sins. That's the only way to salvation. Even as the world gets more confusing, as things go you know, as things change rapidly, the gospel remains the same, even amidst all the confusion in the world today. The gospel is still relevant, the gospel still saves, and Jesus is coming back soon. God bless you.